Belgrade, the capital of Serbia. I'm going to walk over to Republic Square. This is a very uh, interesting walk through here. This uh, area of little shops and lots of graffiti and street art. Today is July 6th, 2020. I arrived in Belgrade on July 1st and was kind of staying inside, getting over my jet lag and working on editing some of my videos. And I went out and filmed another video two days ago and then posted my first video from Belgrade and people started commenting saying that there had been a state of emergency declared in Belgrade on July 3rd. And I posted that uh, video, I think on July 4th, and I had been walking around the city for the uh, previous two days and had noticed nothing out of the ordinary. This does not really look like a state of emergency, does it? I guess it's still in effect now, but it is not a total lockdown kind of a uh, declaration, I guess. I read a news story about it and basically it kind of rolled back some of the freedoms that were being allowed the Serbian people because things here have been much less restricted than many other places around the world. And so nightclubs were open and basically just about everything was open as normal. And I guess because of some rising cases of the virus, then the government decided to kind of pull back some of those uh, freedoms and stop allowing nightclubs and no gatherings of more than 100 people indoors or more than 500 people outdoors and masks are required. I have my mask with me on buses and in, I guess, probably uh, supermarkets and stuff like that. So it is not a, you know, don't go out of your home, stay inside kind of a order. Here you can see the Serbian people are out on this beautiful, sunny, warm summer day, enjoying their city and uh, their freedom to go to restaurants, for example. Here we have a uh, restaurant on the uh, Republic Square. I believe that is uh, the square that I'm at now. And you can see people eating out right there. And so I'm going to take advantage of that freedom as well and explore the city, see some more of this very, very fascinating little known city with incredible architecture, lots of squares and parks and markets and statues, communist era architecture, and older than that, the history is quite staggering. This uh, square was built in the late 19th century, but before that it was a area of so much history it's hard to know where to start and I'm just barely learning a little bit about it, but this area was occupied by the Ottoman Turks and this area apparently was a uh, site of executions of the uh, Serbian people. There was a road going from here to Constantinople, which is now Istanbul, and the uh, former gate here was named after the road going to Constantinople, Istanbul. As you can see, it is now a 
a thriving and very modern city, very clean. It feels very safe. And there is a whole lot to see here. So I'm going to walk over to a region called, I think it is Zemun. Although it is a two hour walk from here, like 10 kilometers. So I likely won't end up actually walking all the way there, but I'm just going to start walking and uh, show what I see along the way and then maybe catch a taxi there. There is no Uber here in uh, Belgrade. So uh, let's get out of this part of town and go see much more. And right here it becomes a walking plaza shopping street area. Walk into here. Local honey products. Apparently the water in these uh, fountains is drinkable. Captain Mises Edifice, Kolarak Foundation, Kalamegdan. That looks like a castle. I'm going to have to uh, find out about that. I am just barely learning about this uh, city and this country. My first time to Serbia. I've been to most of the other Balkan countries. And as everyone knows, travel is challenging at this time especially for those with a, a U.S. passport, but Serbia is open to tourists from around the world, including Americans, and so that is one of the reasons that I came here. Plus, of course, I just wanted to see it. It is very affordable, and so uh, I showed my apartment at the beginning of the video there, and it is just 50 euros per night, or about uh, $55 U.S. And you could certainly find a lot cheaper. That was on booking.com that I found that. The host is amazing. He picked me up at the airport. Really nice guy. And as you can see, a really sweet apartment. But if you look on Airbnb, I'm sure that you would find rooms for, you know, 20 bucks a night and less. Kalamagdan Park, located in the immediate vicinity of the Belgrade Fortress, Kalamagdan, is the largest and most beautiful park in the city. Its name comes from the Turkish compound word town field. It used to be an empty space separating the town from the fortress. By the middle of the 19th century, the fortress lost its military purpose, so the area in front of its ramparts was arranged as a metropolitan park according to European models of the time. The earliest plans for the park date from 1867. They were made by Emilijan Josimovic, the first urban planner of Belgrade. And so the fort here is free to enter. I'm not sure if it will be open now because of the uh, virus but uh, we'll find out in just a second. And the history is absolutely incredible. The original fortress 
built here was built in 279, and that is BC, before Christ. More than 2,000 years ago that this area was settled, and it was the fortress for the town. The residents of the uh, city all lived inside the fortress, and then it was destroyed and rebuilt multiple times. And I believe that this one was built in the 15th century. It is situated on the confluence of the Sava and Danube rivers. And I'll be walking over the Sava River and the area of Zamun that I'm going to is on the Danube. I guess it's kind of a nice area, like a little bit of a uh, town, a village atmosphere or something of cafes and whatnot on the river, on the Danube. Hmm, a dinosaur exhibition. The clock tower was built from 1740 until 1789. The name of the Stambol Gate comes from its position on the main communication route to Constantinople, or Stambol, an abbreviation of Istanbul. The original gate in this location was built in the course of Austrian works on the building and reconstruction of the fortress at the beginning of the 18th century. Okay, I'm not sure if I need to get a ticket here. Let's find out. Okay, so uh, that little ticket booth is where you get a ticket that is 350 Serbian dinar, which is about $3. And so I bought the ticket thinking that I was just wrong about it being free to go inside. And it turns out that is the uh, ticket booth for the dinosaur park. <laughs> Put the mask on just uh, for going inside there. But uh, anyways, three bucks, uh, no big deal. And get a little shot of some dinosaur reconstruction. Statues, whatever. Wow. I wonder if these are real life size. As the last great carnivore of the Cretaceous period, Tyrannosaurus rex was an efficient killer stalking the North American landscape. 65 million years ago, I was just on the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico and there we discussed the meteor strike that hit on the Yucatan, which is believed to be what uh, caused the extinction of the dinosaurs. All right, pretty cool. Let's go inside the fortress. I'm assuming that these are life size. How big the dinosaurs actually were, in which case, man, imagine this thing coming at you. Not that humans existed, of course, but... Wow. Hello, sir. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.
The upper town of the Belgrade Fortress. The upper town is the core and the oldest unit of the Belgrade Fortress. It was enclosed with ramparts at the beginning of the 15th century, maintaining its shape to this day. Its present form dates back to the large-scale leveling of the terrain by the Austrians in the third decade of the 18th century. And you can see there's a large area here, and so the entire town lived in here. The hexagonal building in the central area of the upper town is the mausoleum of Damat al Pashi, one of the few Turkish buildings still preserved in Belgrade. It was erected in 1784 above the grave of Izzet Mehmed Pasha, who died here serving as the governor of Belgrade. The turbe was damaged during the first Serbian uprising and renovated in 1818 to 1819 by Vali Marashli Ali Pasha. Right here. So built during the occupation of Serbia by the Ottomans, as I mentioned before. And here we have the Sava River. And the Danube out there. And there's a bridge over the Sava, actually Maybe this is more the uh, Sava going out this way. Not exactly sure, but uh, that is definitely the Danube there. And there's a bridge over the Sava that I will be walking over. Let's take a look and see how far away it is. I've got a long way still to go to get to the Zemun. And I can see the bridge out there that I'll be walking over. Yeah. I, it's very beautiful. It is, it's amazing. You from Belgrade? Yeah. Okay. I'm from here. Beautiful day. Incredible city. Big city and big history, man. Yeah, exactly. That's uh, what I've been trying to learn a little bit about. We Just ask what you got you want. Uh, I'm uh, from here. I'm born here. Yes, great. Which do you think is the nicest place to visit? I'm going uh, to Zemun. Zemun is nice. Zemun is uh, okay. It's an uh, old uh, city. Yeah. Uh, austro ugarska Serbia. Second austro ugar uh, Austria. When uh, World War II. Yeah. Uh, this is Serbia and uh, Zemun. Yes. Bulgaria and uh, Germany and Austria. I see. Yeah. And we fight. This was, this was the division, the dividing yeah, line. Uh, the, how you say that? The line. Yes, yes, the border, it's, the border. Uh, this water. Yeah. And uh, from this position, uh, we are fight uh, from uh, Austria. I see, wow. Just because, right here. Uh, Vavodina. Vavodina. From Belgrade yeah. uh, to uh, Hungary. Yes. Everything was Austria. Yes. And Austro Hungarian here, um, Empire. Yeah. From yeah. Here to Kosovo, Serbia. Ah, okay, I and see. And Serbia, yeah. which uh, war and fight, uh, get everything. Yes. So the moon was built by Austrians during yeah, that time? Yeah. Oh, I see, okay, okay. So it's going to be a different, different style of architecture then yeah, from the Serbian, uh, I guess. Yeah, old uh, Germany. When you go to Novi Sad, New yes. Sad, yes, Novi every, Sad. everything is uh, different because it's old Germany uh, country and uh, trip to, how you say that, uh, the house is uh, the Germany. Yeah. Some houses uh, built uh, from uh, clay bricks or something like this? Yeah. Clay. Okay, I see, okay. And where I'm are you from? from? I'm from United States. United States, America? Yes, California, nice. California. California? Yeah, yeah. I like California. First time to Serbia, thank you, thank you. Have you been to America or? Uh, I've been uh, in uh, Westbury, Massachusetts. Massachusetts, I see. Yeah. All right. I uh, have a friend there and he learned me to speak English, but uh, I'm not very well. Yeah, no, it's pretty good. My Serbian is nothing. How do you say hello in Serbian? Uh, ciao. 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 But there's another word, I think, also. Zdravo. Zdravo, yes, that's right. Zdravo, yeah. ciao. It's uh, easy because uh, one word yeah. to uh, 
uh, discuss and uh, for different different purposes D one yeah. word for different different situations yeah kind of yes okay you say hi everyone yeah we can say ciao zdravo gde si poštovanje you understand yes i see it's so big different different words different. depend depending english is uh, lucky you, you know what you say and if you say right that is yeah in serbian it's different i see it's more complicated <laughs> do you know the name of this bridge uh with the uh, big cables uh, yeah uh, brankov most brankov most yeah because uh, most our... most most means bridge, right? Most? Uh, most bridge. Yeah. How, uh, how you say it? A guy yeah. who read. Ah, re re how you say uh, in a, a writer, a writer. Writer. Named after a writer. A Serbian writer yeah. who uh, take life yeah. from that bridge. He love yeah. in girl. Uh, that girl not love him. I and see. And he uh, jump from that... Uh, oh, wow. He, he killed himself because of yeah. uh, rejection from the woman. Yeah. And he, he jumped from this bridge? From that bridge. Ah, wow, what a and, sad story. Uh, that bridge uh, called uh, Branko uh, Bridge. Right on, well thank you for the information. No I'm going to keep uh, walking. I can walk over this bridge, uh, over the Sava, over uh, the Sava River just over yeah. here. I think where is the bicycle? Yeah. Uh, you can go uh, to there. Okay. And you will uh, go straight to uh, bridge that. Is it free also? No, tickets, 300 dinners. I see. Different ticket from from the dinosaur. Oh, no. Different, yes, okay. Medieval Torture Instruments Exhibition. Had to check this out. It was 300 dinar, which is also about $3. Here are some Smaller torture devices, but uh, wow, They're pretty hardcore. Look at that. Insane what people do to each other. The break knee. This was used to smash joints, elbows, and knees. The spikes damage the joints irreparably. I bet. Wow, this is a trip. I've been in the torture museum in Cartagena, Colombia, but it didn't actually have very many torture devices in it. This one is chock full of just crazy, crazy stuff. Look at that. Like, does that go over somebody's head, I guess? Yep. Oh my God. Weapons commonly used by policemen and jailers. So I guess you would probably put that around their neck and then drag them around with it. The neck trap, a large ring with nails. Oh man. The rack, there is the infamous rack. One of the most widely used instruments of torture in recorded history. Torturing with water. The interrogation seat. The 
The Iron Shoe. Invented in Austria at the end of the 17th century, it was operated by a screw which forced the foot to become shorter. The degree of the shortening was varied accordingly to the gravity of the crime. The Virgin of Nuremberg. The idea of mechanizing torture was born in Germany, where the Virgin of Nuremberg has its origins. It got its name from the fact that its exterior resembled a Bavarian girl, and also because its prototype was constructed and first used in the underground tunnels of the secret courthouse of Nuremberg. That is it. They would put you inside this contraption, and I guess leave you in there, and here it is. The Virgin of Nuremberg. What a strange name for a very ominous torture device. Look at the spikes. And there are tons of mosquitoes in here, so I'm going to get out of here and get back into the daylight. And out of the torture chamber. The bed bakes my body like bread, filling a handful of dreams. And when opening my eyes, pity upon the walls, how vast the hunger. I wonder if that's a quote from a uh, writer, maybe a local Serbian writer or something. And out here is the bridge that I'm going to cross over the Sava River. looking building there. Let's uh, get across the street while I can. So uh, that was a spontaneous decision to hop on the bus since I have such a long walk. But then it was turning that way and so I got off and the Zamoon area is out this way. Nikola Tesla, a Serbian-American, born in present-day Croatia. He was born in the uh, 1850s, and when he was in his late 20s, then he immigrated to the United States, and it died in New York City. Famous inventor. Boulevard Nikola Tesla. So I guess this is Nikola Tesla Boulevard, and look at this the Hotel Yugoslavia. So, some of you have commented under my uh, previous videos about Ben from the travel channel Bald and Bankrupt and how he was in Serbia and I think is still in Serbia and unfortunately he apparently contracted the coronavirus. He posted a story on his Instagram saying that he was in the hospital, had been in emergency care for the past nine days, got double pneumonia and came pretty close to not making it, but is, I guess, pulling through, uh, but has severe lung damage. So that is really tragic and obviously something that I very much want to avoid. And so somebody had posted a video, a link in one of their comments under my video to a video by a guy called Mr. Tall, a YouTube channel, Mr. Tall. And in that video, then the guy, Mr. Tall, meets up with bald and bankrupt, Ben, and he was staying in the Hotel Yugoslavia. And they showed his room and he was giving a little tour and stuff. And so I guess this is where he was until he got sick. So 
that's really sad to hear and it is something that I am obviously thinking about trying to avoid coming down with this uh, terrible virus and for those who are critical of my traveling at this time I'm not going to go into all of that right here but I wrote an article on my uh, medium.com page addressing some of the criticism and explaining why I'm traveling at this time and that uh, I'm going to be as safe as I possibly can and, you know, wore a mask on the bus and will wear masks where necessary and where it, you know, makes sense. And I was talking with that guy at the fort and I was making sure to keep a six foot distance. So I'll be keeping all of the advice in mind, washing hands regularly and all that stuff in order to avoid either catching or spreading this uh, virus. But unfortunately, it is everywhere and it is actually a lot worse back home in the United States where I'm from. And so you can't really avoid it at this point if you aren't going to hide away in your home for, you know, not just months at this point, but possibly years. And so here's the Danube River and a walking and bicycling path. The moon is still more than an hour's walk that way, and so I'm going to try to find a, a taxi ride from here. It is a hot day, not scorching hot, but uh, nice and toasty warm. You can see people out boating, kayaking it looks like. Biking and walking, so. People are not hiding away in their homes in Serbia. So I asked at this uh, little kiosk right here, you can see Grand Casino. So I guess there's a casino around here. Don't know if it's open, but that is definitely somewhere that I would avoid going inside. And they were very friendly, the man right there, and he called a taxi for me. And I'll mention that uh, everybody that I've talked to so far in Belgrade speaks English. Like everybody speaks decent English. So that is very useful for those of us who do not speak Serbian. Hello, the moon. Ah, uh, the moon, central the moon. And so this is the moon. It was actually quite a bit closer than what was indicated on my Google Maps. It was showing a spot an hour's walk further that way. So it was just 296 Serbian dinar for the taxi ride. The exchange rate for the US dollar to the Serbian dinar is 104 dinar to the US dollar. So basically you can just call one dinar a penny. And so if it's like 100 dinar, then it's basically a dollar. So 300 dinar for the taxi ride would be $3. And so this area of Zamun was a border town between the Austro-Hungarian and the Ottoman empires. So it has a, a very unique history and kind of a separate identity from uh, the rest of Belgrade. And you can see these old historical buildings, there's lots of shops and restaurants, and the Danube River is very close and there are restaurants along the river, so let's walk down there and check it out. And again, the Danube.
all these nice restaurants along here. And there's a fort tower that you can walk up up there. So I'm going to head over there. Get a little view of the area. Ah, it feels nice and cool and refreshing. A dip in there would sure be amazing. One twenty. That is a dollar for a beer.